What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another Mate with Hans Real Estate Podcast. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Hans Weisfeld. I'm a real estate agent here in Miami with Keller Williams. And today's guest is CEO and founder of one of Miami's top real estate teams. Welcome, everyone, to the show, Pedro Casanova. Pedro, thank you so much for being here with us today. I mean, I know you took your time to, to join us, and I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Awesome, man. I know, I mean, I've listened to a few of your podcasts and I've been following you for quite some time now. So I'm really excited to, to cool. interview you. I know you're going to be dropping some great value, man, because cause you've, you've got the knowledge, man. You've got a lot of knowledge in, in there. <laughs> so, um, so Pedro, let's, let's get right into it. Um, I know you're really heavy with the online marketing. Right. So tell us uh, a little bit of how you and your team, you know, how are you guys generating leads via online marketing? Um, so we've been doing it for about three years now. So we're doing a lot of social media, uh, social media ads, also some pay-per-click um, ads online. We just trying different things, learning from different people where uh, I don't think we've really come up with anything. We just adopted and, and, learn, listen to what other people are doing at a, at a decent level. And, and I think we're doing an okay job at it now. Wow. So you say an okay job. I love that because you see so much more potential that there is to, yeah. to be built, let's just say. Wow. Yeah, definitely. That is amazing. I know there's people that are doing much better than we are. We're converting at a much higher level. So there's always, there's always room for improvement, right? We try that. to learn something new every day, pick up new scripts, new ads. So we're always trying to evolve. That's awesome, man. So yeah, let me ask you that. How, how did you get started or how'd you learn about, you know, all the online marketing and I know you're really good with Facebooks and all that stuff. Um, so obviously we know that according to NAR stats and, and other studies, around 90% of people start their search online. Right. right? So the, they, they start to kind of dabble into the idea of buying or selling and they start that process online. Right. Um, so, you know, like everything, technology has evolved, business has evolved. At one point, I, I think the, the, the hot new thing was the Zillows and Trulias of the world, right? And people starting investing into those. So we kind of dabbled in that a little bit, uh, but quickly realized, hey, th these guys are spending money to advertise and then they're selling us the lead and then we're having to compete with other agents that are paying for the same lead. So essentially it was how, how do we bypass that middleman, right? Right. And do the ads ourselves. So then we can capture what it's more of a unique lead per se, which truthfully, so, so we can all kind of realize the people that are clicking on our side are probably clicking a bunch of other sites as well. Right. Um, however, when, we're getting leads from those portals is hey, here's a lead and whoever it's almost like whoever's there at that moment and can address the lead right then and there. And you're competing with four or five different agents um, for that same lead that they converted. Right. So we figured, so understanding that it was, how do we generate these leads for ourselves and then use the tools to then drive those people back to our site over and over and over rather than a third party portal. So what we're doing heavily now is if, if you land on one of our websites, mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of retargeting, right? Beautiful. So you came to our website the first time you registered because you wanted to see the pretty pictures or you might want to buy a home 12 months down the line, whatever it is. Then we start following you and putting more content in front of you. So then we start to build that recognition. Um, so, and that's obviously there's email drips. There's some text messages that get dripped as well. Yeah, but it's to essentially build that presence where Hans, you're getting my texts, you're getting my emails, you're getting dripped on social media. Mm -hmm. So when I call you, it's kind of, most right. of the time we still have to introduce ourselves, but it's like, oh yeah, that's right. I've seen your emails <laughs> or I, I saw your ad on Facebook. And it's to create that idea that, hey, we're everywhere. So to create top of mind. Wow, man. I freaking love that. I mean, definitely that's, that's the way to go. You know, I aim, you know, 
at social media ads at online marketing. I mean, for any business, not just in real estate, right? That's definitely the way to go. And I love how you guys are doing it. You know, I know you say you're not doing it to where you want to be yet, but you're doing it right. Right. I feel like there's a lot of real estate agents out there that, you know, are not, are not implementing these strategies. Um, Cause I know they're not too difficult to make either. I know you had to learn a little bit, but there's, from what I see, there's a lot of people that don't know or don't know how to get started and stuff. Um, was it you that kind of got started, Pedro, like learning about this? Did you learn from, did you have like a mentor, someone else close to you teach you? Or how did you get started from the beginning? Um, so that, it, it was an interest that I had into, hey, how do we develop another pillar or another source of business, right? right. At the same time, as we were shifting our business more into a seller business, is how do we promote our seller's listings and also not only give them exposure, but also capture buyers from those right. listings, right? Right, right. So truthfully, it was some research online, watching a lot of go on YouTube. Right. Um, you're also, you know, funny how we get marketed to and we don't even realize it, right? <laughs> you start If you start searching how to do ads online or how to do social media ads, et cetera, et cetera, all of a sudden you start seeing ads all over the place, everywhere, for pe- right. For people that are promoting that content, right? Right, right, right. So, <clears throat> so finding out who, who are the, started getting some of those ad promotion, kind of digging into their their teasers, right? Because a lot of these things is, hey, I'm going to show you how to do this. Right. And then you learn a little bit. Well, if you want to learn more, now you got to pay that, right? So dabbling into those systems mm-hmm. um, and learning from those people and truthfully, I also had a couple agents in our office that wanted to do something to, to also do online. Right. So we masterminded around it. They tried a few things. I tried a few things. We compared right. results. Hey, here's, here's what's working for me. Here's what's not working for me. Um, and then we started kind of tracking that. Um, and right. it goes from there, you know? <clears throat> right. Right. I love it, man. So let me, so let me ask you, let's, let's, uh, let me ask this question first. So I re- I understand that you're doing mostly Facebook ads, right? Is that how you're the one, your number one source of generating uh, these type of leads? Uh, yeah, we do Facebook and we do pay-per-click. That's, paper, that's really Google? where we're... Pay-per-click yeah. is mm-hmm. like the Google and stuff? Cool. Yeah. So what kind, of, uh, what kind of ads do you see that are converting the most or the ones that you, know, you, you like the best? Uh, the one that, that gives us the biggest bang for our buck is what we call a homeless ad. Perfect. Gotcha. Right. So, so home of list under a certain <clears throat> price. Right. Well, we do it and I'll, and I'll give you the formula, right? So we pick a neighborhood or we pick an area here. Here's where we want to market. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to look. So what's the average price point for that area? So I'm going to see average home for sale in that area, let's say, is, you know, they range from 200 to 400. Mm-hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split that right in the middle, right? And I, and I took this concept from a gentleman that does online marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, sells the product for quite a pretty penny. Um, so <laughs> right. we, were, we were teased with that and we just copied it, right? right. Um, <clears throat> we split that right in the middle. So we're going to advertise homes under 300,000, right? Hey, get a list of homes in this neighborhood or this zip code or this city, whatever you want to call it, under 300,000. And, you know, we'll get permission to advertise a few photos or we'll use some of our listings if we have or the listings from the office, we'll do a collage or we'll do a cup, you know, like the carousel ad. Cool. Right. And right. we, we advertise that. And it's a really simple ad is get a list of homes for this neighborhood, you know, under 300,000 hot new listings, um, special financing available. You know, we have the great opportunity with Keller mortgage. So they get mm-hmm. to get that zero plus loan. So they're, they're available to save anywhere between and a 300,000 on home. Well, between four thousand to about seven thousand, so save up to seven thousand dollars on this home. Click here, so we'll put a link there. <clears throat> Love it. To go to our website, and then obviously, if they click on the ad, then they get sent to our site. Now, our site is triggered to where you know they land. They gotta put in their information. Right. Right. I know we're kind of shifting in another direction with command, where hey, let them see all they want, and um, according to Gary, that register to see information is old Hmm. however they're still converting for us at a decent pace as soon Um, as they land to your page is they get a pop-up when they go see the details 
Gotcha. Right. So, so they're going to click, they're going to land and they're going to see the, the search, the list. So they're right? going to see the, the, yeah, they're gonna see the list, 15, 20, 30 homes. Right. Mm -hmm. But when they click to look at the actual pictures or details of the home, then it's going to ask them to sign in. Perfect. Love it. Right. Love it. So, and then the site has a Facebook pixel, right. That's going to pick up their data. And it's not really sharing their information with me, but it's just, I, I guess their IP address or however Facebook does right, it. Right, right. Right. And then we have a retargeting ad mm -hmm. that basically says, hey, anybody that visited our site in the last six months, then we're going to serve them these ads. Her. Right. So they're going to get served um, additional content. That's, that, that is awesome, man. Let me ask you a few questions uh, <clears throat> about that. Um, so what kind of, so the people that go into your site, so first of all, going to back to the ads, right? The, you know, mm -hmm. the, the agent can do the ad, send them to, to their, the site. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, cause I know they're on Facebook ads, you can do like lead generation and also send them right. somewhere. Do you do both Correct. things like get your contact from Facebook and also send them to your site or I don't like directly to your uh, site? We, we tried both, both avenues. Um, it's hit or miss. With, with the contact info from Facebook, sometimes it's not accurate. Right. right? Not. And the contact info they put in our, in our form, sometimes it's not accurate either. Right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's, that's kind of where it's at. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we've tried both. Um, depending on how Facebook's algorithm is working, sometimes one converts better than the other. Okay. And it converts at a lower price. So that you kind of have to watch from, you know, week to week. Uh, okay. See how, see how the ads are performing. Okay. Um, and you may have to tweak a couple of things. You know, they change their things all the time. All the time. So. Right. Right. <clears throat> so, so would you say that if the agent doesn't really have this, cause I've seen your website, Pedro, and it's like, man, I'm in love with it. It is amazing. I've seen hundreds of real realtor websites. Thank your you. website is on point. It is so clean. So user friendly, uh, for those of you that want to check it out, uh, we'll share with us the, the site. Is it the, the current group that, uh, that the current group.com. Mm -hmm. Beautiful site. I mean, really, I truly loved it. Um, so, so for those agents that don't have a, you know such a great site like that, do you? So, would you say that hey, as long as you know, let's say they could just generate those leads via Facebook and do everything that you're doing, but without taking them to the site, would that still be, you know, still okay? I would say that still works. Perfect. That and then, works. and then you go into into retargeting. That's awesome. Do you have uh, many different ways of retargeting? Like many different. Um, generally our retargeting is when we list a new property, we're retargeting, um, to those people, uh, our new listing, right? Oh, so beautiful. I, I just want you to see, Hey, that you here's guys another are in business. Here's another right. You guys here's are, another right. that you guys are, are, you guys are the people to work with. Right. Love that. So we, we've also, we've also dabbled with some other videos, um, like, um, and we got these through KW video. Mm -hmm. They, they, we used to have that service. That service is no longer in operation, but I, I believe it's still accessible where you can get some of the free videos that they had. Mm -hmm. they're, they're no longer um, supporting it is what it is. So we had some videos like the four things that buyers like about the neighborhood or the best, you know, the four ways to get the most for your home, et cetera. Those were really short 45 to 60 second videos. So we would retarget those as well. And and did you feel like those were working? Like, do you feel like videos work better than photos or, 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 the, or the listings? Or do you feel like as long as you're doing retargeting, it's already good enough? What do you say about that? So the intention behind the retargeting is not necessarily to convert. The intention behind retargeting is to build presence, right? Perfect. So these people already landed on our site. Mm -hmm. We already have their information. Mm -hmm. Um, they're either on one of two things. They're either on what we call a listing alert. So they're getting listings every day from our website, mm -hmm. right? Or they're on a market report, right? So in, in command language that they're on a neighborhood report, right? So what's happening is we've called them. We're sending them text messages, right? They're getting retargeted. They're also getting emailed. So what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to kind of connect all the dots. So when we call them again or later down the line, I'll give you, this is, this is a conversation that I love to have, right? When we, when I talk to a lead 
that we've had in our system for seven, eight, nine months. And we may not have talked because a lot of times they don't answer the phone when they're not ready. But when they, they start to get warmed up, we might have been calling them for eight months and they haven't answered the phone. But then when we get that connection and so I'll, I'll often ask, hey, Hans, what's the best email where I can send you this report? And we'll get the, oh, no, I get your emails. Right. So they know they recognize once it kind of clicks, because at first they don't really know. But once it kind of clicks, they recognize who you are. Right. So then they start to tie in. Okay. They get your emails, they get your texts. They're also getting some stuff on social media. And then, so what we're trying to do is I'm trying to build that brand awareness pretty much that, I, that idea that, Hey, you guys are pretty active. You're all over the place. So yeah, we, maybe we should be doing business. with you. I love that. So have you seen Pedro, um, you know, in the last two, three years that you've been doing this, I'm sure, and I'm sure in the past one year or two, it's been even heavier, right? Cause you know, the more you learn, the better you get at it. Have you seen that when your team or yourself, you guys reach out to these leads, it's so much easier to converse, so much easier to talk to them because they're like, oh, that's right. I know who you are. I get, I see you here. I see you there. I get your email. I get your, right? Well, it, here's what we've seen, right? And this takes time. So you have to commit, you, you have to figure out, hey, what budget can I dedicate to this? Right. right? And it could start at small. It could be small, right? But how much am I willing to dedicate to this? And the, the online lead game is a, lo a long-term game, right? I agree. We're converting, we're converting deals now where, I mean, we, we, one of our team members got a call from a lady. We just sold her a place 13 months in our system, right? No contact. Wow. <clears throat> never engaged until she was ready. She said, hey, uh, this happened to be Lee, one of our agents. He said, hey, Lee. I'm ready to go ahead and buy. I've been getting all your information. So I know that you're the right person for me to be in business with. Right. So, or I trust everything you say, cause I, I've been getting all your messages. I've been getting all your stuff. So that's what we're trying to create. Right. It's basically for people to get to know us without really knowing us per se. And it makes it, it makes it easier for us to convert. However, what I'm, what I want you to pick up also from that is it's a long-term thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, one, one of the people I look up to, which is Ben Kenny mm -hmm. said in a class that I took from him a long time ago, you know, with online leads, you're going to convert maybe 1% right away, right? Or one to 2% right away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Through follow-up, you may be able to convert another one to 2% from that same hundred leads in months six through 12. Hmm. Right. And through continued follow-up, you might be able to convert another one to 2% in the next 12 months. So mm -hmm. if you think about that, we're talking about a 24 month tenure where you can get maybe four, five, six percent return on those hundred leads, right? But it's gonna take you two years, long, 24 months. Yeah, but of, a, a but of course, time. if you keep, you know, doing that, you know, constant, constant, right. then you start building that pipeline where every single month you will get something, right? Correct. So, so and, uh, and you mm -hmm. will get those that are ready to do something now. About one percent, right? 1%, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> one or two percent, well, roughly one to two percent. And if you talk to some, you know, the Zillows and Realtor.coms and all these guys, mm -hmm. they're gonna tell you, hey, you, the, the the best agents convert four to five percent, and it could very well be that mm -hmm. there are agents converting online leads at five percent. I don't think it's that common. Um, at the same time, you, you're paying. Well, Zillows, from what I understand, just completely switched how they do things. Uh, but I know realtor.com you're paying upwards of 40 to $50 a lead. And right. to me, that's just outrageous. It's right, insane. right, right, right. I mean, I mean, I don't know how much you guys are paying to, to generate these leads via Facebook from my understanding and my experience, you know, it could be anywhere from a dollar something to three, $4 a lead. So with that money that you could pay Zillow for one lead, you could generate, you know, so much more right. leads if you do it um, the right way. So, so we, we were, and again, you know, things change and as things change, your cost will also fluctuate, right? Right, right. Um, I can tell you we were averaging, depending on the area too. So we were averaging in some areas $1.95. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we'll market a property and we'll average $0.82, cents, $0.83. Cents. That yes. doesn't happen often. Right. Um, but a dollar ninety five was our average for, for two thousand nineteen in one area and another area was two eighty. Great. Um 
this year we were trying a couple of different things and that's actually driven our cost up a little bit right now we're at 412 a lead um so obviously those couple of different things are not working to our so benefit it, flu- it fluctuates it, fluctuates. it goes up and down do you feel and are we talking about the same <clears throat> sorry are we talking about mm. the same ad pedro like the, the, the same ad the price will change or are you talking about you you know trying different ads different strategies all the time and that's that's why you see different price rate uh, um th- this last change that we did we're trying to do we're, we're trying to do something different with some of our ads which is more property specific um and I think it varies, right? We we've, we've tried the same the same ad for several different price points, and the higher price points are costing us more money per lead. So it's it's really understanding, you know, what ad works for what. So, and I'll tell you, like we have a luxury a luxury listing, one point one million right now, and that ad, the leads that we're converting on that ad are costing me eight seventy five, right? Um, where if we have a property in the, what, what I call the sweet spot, right? Which is somewhere in that 275 to 420, right? Th- those are like hot tamales, right? There's mm-hmm. people fighting over those, the hot ads tamales. on those properties. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, you, you ever been to the zoo? I've been to the zoo a few times. <laughs> right. You know where you, wait, I will relate to Metro Zoo when you walk in, right? And they have that pond and they have the little pebbles and you pay 25 cents for a bunch of pebbles. And then you throw one of those pebbles in the water and all the catfish come up and they like devour that. That's kind of what those properties are like. Right. Right. I agree. That's... So on those, we're probably at around $2 right now. Right. Right. So, yeah. So you're just trying different strategies out, right? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're mm-hmm. trying, you know, to aim, aim at these, this type of clientele, this type of clientele, the, you know, like just trying different strategies. I love it. I mean, like you said, you need to understand and know your budget. Once you have that budget, you can kind of mess around with it and right. see what strategies yep. work, what don't implement, double up down on the ones that work. And then I love that. That's right. how you, that's how you, I'm sure that's how you've been getting better and better, right? By trying different things and, and, uh, and just, just doing it, right? Just doing it, man. Yep. I love, I definitely love that budget thing. Like I never, I haven't really done a budget for myself, right? There's like probably a lot of agents that don't, they just do things. Um, but I definitely do love, you know, just having a, a set budget. It'll probably make things a lot more easier, right? In the just more organized. Well, you you gotta know. You, you can't just spend without tracking it, right? And they can very easily get out of control. I'll give you an example. We do we do video ads on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And I have a limit. Hey, we're only gonna spend this much per day to advertise and YouTube every week. Hey, you missed on 600 views per day because your budget was too low. (laughs) Hey, you missed on whatever per day because your budget, right? It it hurts. (laughs) Well, it does and it doesn't, right? Like I understand what I'm trying to accomplish with, with those ads. And I have a certain, I have a certain metric that I'm trying to hit what I have a certain purpose for those right. ads that we're running. And I understand that, Hey, I may be missing on additional views yet. If I start dumping all that extra dollar to get those additional views, it kind of takes me out of my budget. Right. Um, as our business grows, then we can allocate a larger percentage of our money into that bucket. And then we'll spend a little bit more. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is every yeah. day, I'm sure you get them all the time. You'll get an email or a text or maybe several or a phone call about, hey, this is the new greatest, latest thing that you can advertise in or implement or tool or the VA or ISA all, all or all, or the all these. All the right? Time. right. That's going to make you rich tomorrow. And mm-hmm. if you're not, if you don't control that before you know it, you're spending more than you're making. I agree. No, I so, definitely, definitely need yeah. to need to be careful um and talking about talking about the budget for for online marketing for for the agents that may not know is there a specific number that from your experience you know a lot of agents that you've spoken to like they allocate to um online marketing or you know what kind of budget that is if it's a one percent and a five i i wouldn't say there's a specific we try to follow the models that we learn in the millionaire real estate agent book 
-hmm. So we try to stay within a certain amount of money for our overall marketing. Mm -hmm. And within there, it's how much money we're spending on ads, right? Um, I would say at first, I wouldn't spend more than a couple hundred bucks, mm -hmm. right? Maybe 200 per month, 300. Yeah. Per month. Right. Perfect. As you start to get a return from that, right. Then you gauge, okay, Hey, look, I spent 200. We closed one deal every month, right. Or one deal every other month from it. So if let's say you did, I know your price point might be a little different than ours. Um, but our average right now is around 300, right? Mm -hmm. So we do one transaction and make average nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars right <clears throat> if we spend four hundred dollars and we got nine thousand back right and we're doing that consistently then now we can say all right so this this marketing avenue is working well we're getting a great return on it so let's dial it up a little bit and see if we can get maybe two deals for you know three hundred dollars right? right and depending on how that is working for you then you can tick it up or tick it down I or you agree. decide, I don't want to spend any more money on this other source. It's not doing anything, right? We spent on stuff. Um, we used to do one of those uh, fancy magazines that goes out to people. So it makes you look real good. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think we were getting a return on investment on that. So we cut mm -hmm. that off, right? And we mm -hmm. reallocated that money um, into online, right? I mean, we used to do, and it's all preference, right? We used to do just sold cards or just listed cards. Mm -hmm couple hundred bucks is not a lot of money. I just felt I couldn't track per se how many people are looking at the card. Is it going in the garbage? Is it not? Mm -hmm. um, once they look at it, I really can't reach back out to them. Right. So I'll take those $150, put it into online marketing. Now I know, okay, you know what? We marketed this property to that specific area because we can think point, right. And we can geo market. So I'll say market within a mile of this house. And I can see how many people looked at the ad, mm. right? I can see how many people interacted. And if you happen to have landed on my website, then now you're getting retargeted. Love it. Right? So, so. there's a lot, there's a lot more. Um, data, we have right? Lot, data would yeah. be online. Like you can really see where they're coming from, what are they doing, retarget. Right. It's, it's with the same budget as you would spend sending the old, right. the just list just sold. Right. And that's also data that we can share with our customers, right? Again, uh, right now, our, our main driver for our business is listings. So now I can go back to our seller and say, hey, Mr. Seller, this is what we did with our marketing efforts. And this is how many people saw your home. This is how many people clicked through to see the details, right? And now we have more, we're bringing them more value rather than yeah. send 100 postcards to all your neighbors. And we really don't know what happened to them. Man, that is amazing. That is amazing. So when you speak to these sellers and you're giving them kind of like this updates on, on, on your online efforts, like you say, are you sending out like an email with like screenshots or you like, how, how, how would an agent, you know, that's starting to do this, uh, how would they, you know, talk to their sellers? Like, Hey, look what I'm doing for you. Um, that happens on a phone call once a week. Uh, mm -hmm. our, actually our admin staff is having that phone call with them. Mm -hmm. They're talking about the actual uh, data points, right? So they're reaching out to the same, hey, Mr. Seller, we had this many views on YouTube. We had this many views on, you know, on our website. We had this many views on the online portals. So and we gather that data from the different places, mm -hmm. and then we just share that information with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really go on a screenshot or report. They do get a weekly um, email giving them essentially a report on all our marketing efforts, right? Hey, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this to market your property and, and find you a buyer. But those, um, that data is being shared verbally. Love it. I love that, man. I'm, I'm sure that's, I mean, that definitely separates you from the rest of, you know, the probably the 55,000 agents that are out there in Miami, right? Well, hopefully it, it, it allows us to stand out a little bit <laughs> and, then, and then get some referrals from them. Beautiful. I love that, man. Um, let me ask you, let me ask you, what is something, Pedro, that, you know, if you were to start it, if you, you know, could start again today, knowing everything that you do, if you're a new agent, what would you have changed? What would you do differently? Prospect from day one. Are we Don't talking about picking up, picking up the phone, prospecting on the Pick, phone? 
pick up that phone and make phone calls. Right? So, um, my business completely, completely changed once I started doing that consistently. Right. Um, hmm. And when I say consistently, it was probably <laughs> two or three times a week. Right. Um, so I st started doing it more and more often. Right. And you, at, at first you stink at it, right. It feels like you're not good. Uh, you're having to talk to a lot more people. Hmm. Right. And you, you got to put in the work, right. As you get better at, as you go through, you start getting better. So you start getting better conversions. Right. And it becomes a little bit more fun, but I'll, I'll share with you that. Yeah. So, I made a commitment more to myself than to anybody else last week that I was going to make an appointment every single day. Right. And here's the challenge on Friday. I was on the phone for five hours, talked to 60 people until I set my first appointment. Right. Throughout, throughout those five hours, I wanted to quit like seven, eight times and be like, all right, that's, you know, I talked to 30 people today. I'm done. Right. I talked to 40 people today. I'm done. Um, Monday I talked to 52 before I set the appointment, right? And I also have to understand within those 112 people that I talked to, so your dog was barking, now mine is barking. <laughs> um, I also put in 12 new people into my database and I got eight nurtures that I didn't convert neither Friday or Monday, yet now these are people that are getting dripped, that are going to get texts, mm. that are going to get emails. Um, and are going to get called once a quarter right. to kind of get them closer to where they need to be or to follow up. Hey, you say you weren't ready then, but are you ready now? Okay. Um, but that is the one thing that I would say yeah. is going to be a game changer in your business. Um, understand that we can try to find many different ways to to find business, right? At the end of the day, whether you do it at the beginning or you do it at the end, you still have to reach out to people. Right. Right. And I know we get those ads that say, oh, never make another cold call. Mm. Don't call anymore. Have people calling you and all this other great stuff. At the end of the day, the conversation still needs to happen. Right. So whether you're calling people that you like, know, you know, that like you, know you and trust you, your, your friends and your phone, whoever it is, you still need to prospect. Right. Right. So I, I, that was a challenge for me. The first four years that I was in real estate, I looked for other alternative ways to, Hey, how do I do it? How do I do it? I struggled my first year with KW still didn't want to buy in to that. Right. Until, you know, I just said, okay, it, it, everybody keeps telling me this is the way I have to do it. <laughs> then I, I'm going to start doing it. And our business has, you know, grown year after year so that is awesome and just to be clear for those viewers you're talking about prospecting mostly at least for you uh for so by owners and expires uh no not necessarily for so by owners and expires i mean but, and truthfully those are my least favorite calls perfect right? okay just i just um, want to be clear yeah. for those listeners because yeah. you're saying 50 <clears throat> 60 calls so i'm thinking in my head i'm thinking man for so owners and expires that's, that's tough that's a tough day but so tell a, yeah, those were tough days. <laughs> um, so, so it's a mix, right? So we'll do now in those 50, 60 calls, there were some for sale by owners and expired, right? Okay. But on a, on a, on a regular day, here's what I try to do. I try to do at least 10 contacts to for sale by owners, 10 contacts to expired. I'm going to hit my database. So I'm going to talk to some of the people in my database. I'm going to do some follow-up calls. I may do some circle prospecting. I may be calling, you know, the follow-up calls are to online leads. Um, so there, there's it. a variety. Uh, Love it. A mix. It makes um, it so much better, huh? Uh, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, here's something that my coach told me, and if she's watching, because she might be, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the... I'm probably her worst coach E, if that's even a word, right? Or her worst student. <laughs> coach E. <laughs> but, but um, hey, talk to 20 people a day for the next five years, right? And then do whatever the heck you want because you're going to make so much money that it doesn't matter. So I listened to the advice. It's in my head. 
Michael M., I'm, I'm still working on it. Okay? <laughs> still working on it. Um, but essentially, you, you got to mix it up. And you know what? The goal is, so here's my goal. My goal is to build my database mm -hmm. of people that I know, like, and trust where it's big enough that it will support the income that I want to make, right? The only reason that we call for sale by owners and expires is because the people that I know, like, and trust are not referring me enough business yet where it will support the income that I want to make, right? Makes sense. Absolutely. So I have to get business from these other pillars, right? Right. However, if I build my network and my database to the size where I'm calling you as my friend and just checking up, see how the kids are doing or how the dog is doing or what are your plans and asking you for referrals. And you're going, Pedro, you're awesome. You do some, you know, great work. Here's a referral. And I'm getting enough of those where it supports the income that I want to make that I don't need to make any other calls. Right. But at the beginning, especially if you're starting out, you, you only have so many cousins, sisters, and brothers and aunts that are going to sell houses. Right. So then you got to call people you don't know. I totally, totally agree. So going back to what your coach told you with uh, 20 people per day in five years. So is that the same, uh, the same thing you're talking about? Yeah, in five years, you're going to build so much, you know, so much of a database that, you know, you don't, not that you, you have to stop calling, but you already have, you know, the referral base and the sphere of influence already all that's, inside your database. That's, that's the goal to build right. a, Love it. I mean, I wouldn't say hundred percent referral business because, but it, essentially the majority of our business to come from referrals. And, and those are the best pieces of business to have, right? I mean, look, your, your best friend, your cousin, your friend, or whoever says, hey, you got to call Hans. He took care of me selling my house. He did a great job. Man, he got us what we wanted, helped us move in a timely fashion, et cetera. When that person calls you or you call that person, they're, they're pretty much – the, the trust factor is there, right? They inherited trust from the person that referred you. Right. Right. So now the, I say jokingly to our team, now you, you just got to make sure you don't screw it up. Right. I agree. So because they already know you like you and trust you mm -hmm. because their friend knows you likes you and trust you. Right. When you're dealing with a stranger, right. Whether it be for sale by owner, expired online lead, whatever it is. Um, those people are also getting called by a whole bunch of other people. So how do they differentiate you versus somebody else? Right. So it's a much tougher uh, conversion. So you got to be sharper with your scripts. You got to practice and know what to say and when to say it. Love it, man. Love it. Pedro, you dropped so much value in this, in this podcast today, man. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, just to finish off, we're going to go into some fun questions to finish this off in a fun way. Sounds good, Pedro. Sounds good. All right, man. So, uh, so tell us, Pedro, what is the best and the worst purchase you've ever done in your life in general with anything that you want to talk about? The best and the worst purchase. <laughs> man, and anything? Yeah, if, if, if you can only come up with one, tell us one. The best purchase. What's, what's the best thing you've ever purchased? No, I'm saying in, in anything at anything all. Anything in general, right. yep. All right. <laughs> um, this is going to be a little cheesy but i grew up boating mm -hmm. as a kid with my dad i think the best purchase was when i bought my boat and i'm able to share that time with my kids now and also with my father so and with the family so that's allowed me to do something that i enjoyed as a kid that i enjoy now and it's like you pass it on to them so as amazing I know, man i know, I know people say the happiest day is when you buy the boat and when you sell it. I, I believe that that applies to some people, uh, but I think that, that that's probably one of the most enjoyable things that I've been able to buy. Man, that's, that's deep right there. That's uh, family. It's all about the family, right? So that's right. beautiful, man. Especially if your dad was doing it with you and now you're doing it with your kids. That must be right. very, you know, a very good feeling, man. That's, that's awesome. Can you think of uh, something the worst? <laughs> the worst. Uh, I used to be into classic cars, man. Um, <laughs> and I spent way too much money in cars when I was too young. So I, I would say I was spending about 80% of my income in, into cars. So that was probably some of the worst purchases I made. Looking back at it and learning from some of my mentors and other people that I look up to about building wealth and investing and all the other stuff. I, I told my wife the other day, man, if I would have spent 
half of that money into stocks or, you know, mutual funds or something like that at 19, 20, 21, our world yeah. would look completely different. <laughs> hey, but you, you never know, man. What if, um, you know, I'm a person that thinks like everything kind of happens for a reason. Everything's attached. Right. So who knows, like now that you're older and you have that mentality of business and, and keep going for your future, if you didn't do those errors, you know, in, in, in the past, now, like, like you've done those errors, you know? So you're like, no, I got to be careful. I got to be wise where I spend my money, my budget, et cetera. Right. Like and, and don't get me wrong. There's no regrets. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute. Of it. It's just, you know. A lot of money hindsight, spent. Hindsight's 2020, right? Muscle cars. Muscle cars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. No, not muscle cars. That was actually low riders. <laughs> I got to see pictures of those. I know. I'm sure you have those. Last question, yeah. man. Last question. Um, if you could choose any superpower, Pedro, would you rather speak all languages or be able to speak to all animals? That's a funky question, man. <laughs> speak all languages or speak to all animals? Hmm. I would probably go with all animals. Why? Why? Understand a different perspective. Love it. Right? Love like, if you think about it, like your dog, what does your dog think about you? I would love right. to be in there you know, and be able to talk to, to, to her. So, Absolutely, man. I don't need Absolutely. to hear more stuff from people. <laughs> Pedro, it's yeah. been a pleasure to have you, man. It's been, it's, it's really, it's been great. You've dropped so much value for those, for those people that are going to be listening right now and in the future. Thank you so much once again for, for being with, with us here today. And, uh, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Whoever wants to reach out to Pedro, you can reach them again. Well, uh, the website, uh, thecurrentgroup.com, correct? That is correct. And you can find them on Instagram. You can find them on Facebook. They are everywhere, and they will retarget you. I'm just kidding. So if you're, if you're an agent, what areas do you cover mostly, Pedro? Uh, we, we do pretty much all Southwest Miami. So if it has a Southwest address, we, we, can, we can hit it. Perfect. For those people that may not know so much, can you tell us a few areas and neighborhoods for those people uh, that may not? All right. So you know? let, let's let's look at it this way. If it's the 836, right? The 836 Highway South. So from the airport south, we can help you out. Love it. Love it. Love it. I appreciate it. So from the from the airport north, depending on where it's at, I may refer it to you or to somebody else. But uh, airport south will take care of. All right, man, and I'm glad. I'm glad that that now I know you you handle those areas because uh, you know sometimes I don't want to drive all the way to Homestead or, or Dude, South why, Kendall, why, those why areas. You, so why, why are you driving over here? Why? I know I got you Just now, my man. Ring. Love it, <laughs> Pedro. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your evening. We'll hey, stay. Thank in you touch. for the opportunity, Hans. I appreciate it. All right, my man. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.